uh, because that's what we tested in the ANOVA. So what I'm going to create is a sex by body size uh, variable. I'm going to call it body size like that. Okay, so now we click sex and then we multiply that by the body size factor. Okay, so that's going to be my interaction term in the analysis. Now I've created a variable that uh, comes out over here and it's called sex by body size. All right, and because uh, females are labeled zeros and males are la labeled ones, uh, this is how the data come out. It actually doesn't matter that that's how it is. You can label uh, females ones and males twos, and you would get different numbers here, but it wouldn't matter for the purposes of the analysis. So what I want to know is, does this interaction variable actually predict uh, cranial capacity uh, in a statistically significant way once above and beyond the main effects. So I'm testing my assumption of my homogeneity of regression assumption here, okay? So I'd put cranial capacity in the dependent variable and I put sex, I would put, uh, sorry, I would put sex in one block and then I would put uh, body size in another block. This is a hierarchical multiple regression. I don't expect you to totally understand what I'm doing here. I just want to show you that the results will come out the same way. Okay, so now I've got my regression, and I've got my sex by uh, my sex by body size, uh, t value, and statistical significance of 0.323. All right, so this is in my third model. I, I'll do another video that does hierarchical multiple regression, but the main thing here is that I've done a sex by body size interaction variable, and I got a significance of 0.323, which is not significant, which suggests that the homogeneity of, some, uh, homogeneity of regression um, holds, which was also true, you may recall, in my analysis of uh, my uh, ANCOVA, right? When I did my custom, and I had that in there, what did I get for statistical significance in the model? Here, sex by body size, tested between subject effects, significant at 0.323. That's not a coincidence that they came out exactly the same. Now, I've used multiple regression to test my, my, uh, to test my assumption of homogeneity regression. As homogeneity regression. I'm satisfied. I didn't reject it. Now, I want to do my multiple regression to see if sex can actually predict cranial capacity above and beyond uh, body size. And I've already created my body size factor and the principal components, and I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to put my body size factor in the first block, and then I'm going to put sex in the second block. All right, and I'm hoping that sex is going to be able to predict cranial capacity above and beyond body size. That's what the ANCOVA did for me, and this is what the multiple regression is also going to do for me. All right, so I'm going down to my main coefficients in the multiple regression. So I'm assuming you know how to do a multiple regression, and this has all uh, been there, done that for you. So I've got my body size effect, which is, you might recall that number. 0.056, and then I've got sex, which is the main part of my hypothesis. I've got 0.363, and that is a statistically significant beta weight at 0.011. And what, what, what did I get in my analysis of covariance? Well, I went into there, went to model. I'm just redoing what I did previously, but I deleted the output. Tested between subjects effects, sex, Significant at 0.011 for an F value of 66. And I get the same thing. It's a T value, but if you square that, you'll get the F. But the significance is 0.011. I got the same exact result. 0.011, significant for sex in the ANCOVA. And then we've got 0.011 for sex in the multiple regression analysis. And we've got um, a statistically significant uh, F change. Um, again, if you understand higher multiple regression, this is telling me, it's basically telling me the same thing as the beta weight in the, in the coefficient table, but it's telling me that my adjusted R, R squared, oh, my R squared, doesn't test it on adjusted R squared, but on my R squared, has been increased statistically significantly by adding sex as a predictive variable for cranial capacity 
uh, controlling for body size factor. Now, why is this important? Well, it's interesting just to see that ANCOVA and multiple regression are doing exactly the same analysis. I've, I've, when I was learning statistics, I found that amazing. I felt like, wow, I think I really am starting to understand stats now. If you do not understand stats very well, this is just going to be like mind-blowingly complicated. It's going to ruin you. That's why I said if that's all you want to know, ANCOVA, then you should have stopped the video earlier. But I think if you have a, an intermediate level understanding of statistics, this is very interesting. Now, what's even even more interesting on an even higher level is that those criticisms that have been articulated in many publications about how ANCOVA is dealing with fictitious hypothetical means that don't exist in reality and we have to acknowledge that there are differences between um, people on socioeconomic status or body size, whatever your covariate is, you very rarely see in comparison the same criticisms leveled at multiple regression analysis and there's no reason why you can't do this analysis in multiple regression because you get exactly the same results as ANCOVA but people do not level the same criticisms against it and I think that's uh, a misalignment with um, with the ANCOVA. Are people being too harsh on ANCOVA and not harsh enough on multiple regression? I don't know the answer. I think you, you, you always have to maintain in your mind the limitations associated with your analysis. And I, I think what we have to acknowledge is that multiple regression has the same limitations. And multiple regression is used very, very frequently for the purposes of doing a control, uh, for controlling the influences of other variables on the dependent variable. But you don't see people interpret it in that same cautious way that 